Welcome to the Lucas Miles Show. I'm your host, Lucas Miles, and welcome to another incredible episode of the Lucas Miles Show. My guest today is Katie Miller from Sight and Sound. I've been a champion for these guys because they literally blew my mind. I've, I've had Katie on the program before. I've also had the opportunity to go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania and, and see a Sight and Sound show. I saw the Jesus show last year, and this thing is its just incredible. I've toured Hollywood Studios with less technology, with less uh, innovation than what I've seen at Sight & Sound. So if you've not checked them out, definitely do so. After this interview, jump over to sightandsound.com and they are going to blow your mind. You have to see a show. They have a location in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, as well as Branson, Missouri. You know, Katie Miller is always one of my favorite people to talk to at NRB. I think you're going to love this interview. But before we get to it, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Cove. Head over to covesmart.com to find out more. My house is protected by Cove. Five-star home security system without contracts or headaches. Head over there and you can check out their system, all the different products that they have from, from door sensors, window sensors, home cameras. You can tie it in with an app. I can pull up my house right now, flip through the cameras, see what my dog and cat are doing, make sure everybody's safe. I travel a lot. It's a really great thing for you know our family. I think you're going to enjoy it as well. Head over to covesmart.com. want to thank them for their sponsorship. And with that, here is the episode. Katie Miller from Sight & Sound. Welcome to the Lucas Miles Show. I'm your host, Lucas Miles, and I am here at the National Religious Broadcasters Procl- Proclaim. Every now and then, my voice doesn't work. Proclaim 2019. It's all that raw milk, Katie Miller. <laughs> and my- Listen, I'm telling you, it solves a myriad of health issues. <laughs> My guest today is Katie Miller from Sight and Sound, and she is the communications manager at Sight and Sound, and I think she basically does a ton of other things there as well, including every now and then drinking raw milk, and I'm glad to have you on the program. (laughs) It's great to be here, as always. (laughs) We were having a nice uh, conversation at breakfast this morning about... uh, about the benefits of raw milk, which yeah. I've not been brave enough to try, but maybe you might have convinced me to. Yeah, listen, Lancaster County is the like dairy one of the dairy capitals of the nation, and so we have lots of options. You need to come visit. All right, I'll hook you up. All right, <laughs> I'll see what I can do. And I have been out there, as you, you know. Have. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I and I I've said this before in interviews, but I think it's worth saying again. I think it's people hear um, Christian theater, which you guys probably get lumped in at mm-hmm. times, which I don't think is a is a great necessarily description of everything that you are but they hear that when people go oh, what is it oh it's this kind of faith stage mm-hmm. thing and in like i think everybody has flashbacks of like felt boards and like Bath hand robes. puppets like hello <laughs> yeah. jesus you know they're just right. kind of doing this yeah. thing and the reality is like i was i mean i was just blown away and i i think that it's it cirque du soleil meets broadway you know, meets the Bible. And it was just so, um, it was just such a moving and powerful experience. I've, I tell everybody about it all the time. And so what's, what's new with sight and sound? What are you guys working on? I know you had just had a big event that just happened. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, well, thank you. You're very kind. And we love to say that we bring the Bible to life on stage um, and that we're a place where story meets spectacle. You know, these Bible stories are epic. We don't have to do a lot of embellishment because there's seas that part and temples that collapse and all these different elements throughout the shows. Um, And so the ability that we have to present them in such a big, huge, immersive way that audiences are not just observing something that's happening, but they're actually sitting in the middle of the show and a part of it is um, an honor that we have that we're really excited about. But yes, there's a lot going on. So we have Jesus on stage in Lancaster. We have Samson on stage in Branson this year. But then we also um, have been trying to extend our mission beyond our four walls. And we've been doing that through Fathom events. So in 2017, we had Jonah. We just did Moses the end of last year. And we just most recently did Noah for three nights. And it's been just such a really cool extension of who we are. And honestly, just even a little bit of a nod into our history as well. We started with multimedia. And so just kind of see it all come full circle 45 years later. Um, and be back on the big screen is pretty, it's exciting. So for um, our maybe listeners or our audience that aren't familiar with a Fathom event, mm-hmm. basically it's a, 
Uh, it's a distribution slash promotional yeah. uh, platform or mm-hmm. organization that partners with theaters across the country right. and and films or shows mm-hmm. or concerts that say, hey, we want to get this into this space for a one day period or a three day period or something like right. that for you have to go to this day at this, you know, this theater, yeah. you know, to be able to see that. But it's a way to kind of get that reach out there. And uh, so what are you finding through these Fathom events? Are, are people seeing that and going like, I got to go to the real thing? Yeah, it is. It's such an interesting, um, it's such an interesting dynamic because the very first time we did it, I'm not going to lie, we were sort of like, is this going to like cannibalize ourselves? Like if people can go to movie theaters mm-hmm. and see this and have this experience, are they going to say, well, I'll just do that instead of coming Which to Which is always location. the fear with something online. I mean, it is. Uh, yes, online the fear church, with like if we yeah. stream our services, right. nobody going to show up, right. you know, kind of thing. But I think like we're experiencing it having the exact opposite of, uh, effect and we're seeing more and more people like being introduced to us for the first time. And here's the thing, like we also know we have two locations, Lancaster and Branson, and the entire nation can't come to those two locations we don't have capacity but even beyond that you know lives are busy there's a lot going on and so um you know sight and we our hope is that we're always at a place where people can come together and share an experience and we were just talking yesterday about the fathom events with a group of people and saying that the thing that makes them so cool is that they're different than just going to see a movie like they truly are a shared experience and event so when we're getting you know notes and letters after the fact saying our whole church went our youth group went our homeschool group went our you know we took our entire extended family we went out to dinner we had this big shared experience um that's the thing that gets us so excited because what happened happens then is that that experience continues beyond the event itself like beyond just not just but just having the movie theater experience you leave and there's conversation that happens in the car on the way out and there's you know you're talking to your kids later about what did you think about that how did you experience Noah you know have you ever had time where people didn't believe you or you had to trust in the faithfulness of God and knowing that those conversations are so life-giving to families and the communities is what like is what makes this whole thing really special like the fact that it is only three nights and there's tens of thousands close to hundreds of thousands of people across the nation sharing this experience is just in and of itself the piece that makes it Mm. set apart it's just really cool you know i was you know as you know here at nrb there's everything from you know everything everything yeah <laughs> literally I mean, everything lots of lots of new tech <laughs> lots of films you know projects mission organizations you know the whole deal uh, i was just down the hall and i tried out a vr experience mm-hmm. and it it's was on our list to do next <laughs> I, yeah i <laughs> highly recommend it and it was like it was almost like this meditative like took me into this other dimension when mm-hmm. i took it off i was like whoa what happened yeah but that's how i felt when i was at sight and sound mm-hmm. i had this you know um, and I think especially if you're probably like in, I mean, there's not a bad seat in the house, right. but you know, if you're in the right seat there mm-hmm. in the center of the the space, you yeah. get the whole experience. You can take that in and you guys have just done a wonderful job setting that up. You know, it, it literally transports people, I think, to that, to yeah. that world, to that realm. And, um, I don't know where, I mean, where does the creativity, where do you find, do you guys have like, have you found like elves from middle earth to build these sets for you like what is what's the magic that's happening there that brings this creativity together yeah we definitely have elves that okay. is our secret I, thank I you for knew it. we that. broke it here first on the Lucas you heard Miles it show. here first no we have just truly like the most amazing people i know that i'm biased but we have 650 employees this incredible team that comes together to produce create the shows and then also you know bring them to life every day but it is just astounding. Like we joke all the time, we, you know, we call ourselves not not your average workplace, but truly like walking through the theater on any given day, you just have no idea what you're going to turn the corner. And yesterday, or a couple of days ago when I was at work, the last time I was there, I'm walking through the scene shop and all of a sudden I look over and there's like a life-sized elephant with people sitting on its back walking through the scene shop. And I'm like, what is <laughs> happening right now? That's for our upcoming show. We just recently announced we're doing Queen Esther next year. And um, the directors and producers had this vision for her to ride an elephant. And so that's the prototype. So that's this is like a mechanical Yes, but it's so, like it is startling because it's so lifelike. <laughs> and I was like, when, when's my turn to ride the elephant? Like, I want to ride the elephant. Uh, but truly, like, it's just you turn the corner and you're like, who, like, who are these people? Like, I mean, I'm with them every day and... It's not just their talent, the gifts, the design that God has in them, but just like their hearts too. Like they are just so passionate about why we're doing this. Like, and they say, you know, it's just when they, when you recognize that we're all designed to play our part 
and then be able to be in the entertainment industry um, in a way that's so life-giving and purposeful is just, I think, the thing that unites us as an organization. It makes our internal culture just super cool. Like, we have a lot of fun doing I mean, who gets to, like, prototype walking elephants? You know, like, it's just, <laughs> who Do does that? Do you have, like, staff meetings when there's, like, there's, like, two camels, a robotic elephant, and, you know, like, you're seeing, I mean, is yeah. that, it's just, this is, this, this is, is who we, this, what we do. Yeah, and they're yeah. contributing just as much as everybody else Right, is. yeah, no, and I mean, like, literally, this was a real thing that happened. <laughs> I'm, like, sitting in a meeting, we're having, like, a staff meeting, and then this conference room, you know, and, like, because, you know, I don't get to be in those parts of the world all right. the time. But we're sitting there, like, working, and all of a sudden, there's, like, a knock on the door, and the door opens, and, like, this animal trainer and a goat walks in, and they're, like, we're acclimating the goat. Can anyone come say hi to the goats? So we're, like, Did he okay. offer you raw milk? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but that's that's going to be next. Okay. But it's really like we all like have to stop a meeting and go pet the goat and like welcome to the sight and sound family, Mr. Goat. You know, like, it's just that's what we do all the time. It's you never Very know what's going to happen. Complicated HR process, I think. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So, as as um, you know, as you guys are looking forward uh, to the future, you know, you have things like Fathom events and and um, you know how how. You know, what are those conversations like internally? And I'm sure there's some things you can't share, so mm-hmm. I don't want to push you to that place. Yeah. But, you know, um, how's the world changing that mm-hmm. you have these two locations? Like, what does that look like for you guys? What's the mindset in there? Because yeah. I think this is meaningful, not just for sight and sound. Mm-hmm. I think it's also a helpful conversation for anybody that has a brick and mortar yeah. that's trying to go, how do I expand my reach? So yeah. can you talk to us about, you know, just as a professional, what your mm-hmm. thoughts are on that? Yeah, completely. I mean, we like I said earlier, like we can't, everyone can't come to our two locations and we are absolutely in a season of exploring and discerning what God has for us as an organization next. And we believe that that means growing, you know, like we are a creative organization. It is our heartbeat is to continue to create, create, create. And so what does that mean? And what platforms does that look like? Um, in some ways, the possibilities are endless, which in and of itself is a little, that's the part that's overwhelming is actually narrowing it down too many choices. Yeah. To say, you know, what could be next for Mm -hmm. us? Um, and we don't know, but it's the season that we're in to say Fathom events have been incredibly successful. Um, Noah just, yep. we just finished that one and Noah's going to be released on home entertainment. So home entertainment is another sphere that we're exploring streaming. Like Noah will mm-hmm. be coming out and this is my little plug. Noah's coming out on DVD and home entertainment, uh, just in the next couple of weeks. So watch for that. But awesome. it's, um, and by time that people see this, it's probably going to already be yeah. out there. Right. So yeah. It's going to go be out there. It, so go, it. it'll be on Amazon, iTunes, like all of those platforms. And so for us, it's about saying, okay, how do we make this content accessible? Because it's not just about, you know, selling as many tickets as we can. Like we believe in these stories. Like they've been, they're timeless. They've been around for thousands of years. We're, we're not, we can't take credit for this. We, right. we know that. We just have the opportunity to tell them in a really cool and spectacular, entertaining way. And so how do we make them as accessible as possible? And acknowledging that technology changes every day. Like every day there's something new, there's a new platform, there's a new way to connect with people. Um, How do we engage in the digital sphere? How do we bring, like you said, part of why we do what we do is the opportunity we have to transport people back in time. Like when you are sitting in those seats and all of a sudden you are in the, like the Sea of Galilee or you are in Jerusalem or coming up with Queen Esther, you're going to be in the center of the capital of Susa in Persia. And it is gorgeous. Like the scenery in Queen Esther is gonna be amazing. But how do we take that same experience and take it out. Like Mm. that's our conversation right now. Um, And does that mean another location someday? Maybe, but there's a lot of other stuff we can do between now and then. And that's what we're, that's what we're exploring. And I don't have any, like we really don't have an answer. It's not about not sharing. It's like, we don't know. There's like so many things. Honestly, I I mean, for, for our audience, which I think is a lot of Mm entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial minded people, filmmakers, you know, dreamers, next gen thinkers. I think that just the, the thought process behind it is the answer in many ways. Right. and, and I think that, you know, seeing a successful organization like yours that I think, um, I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're a trendsetter in your mm-hmm. space. And, and I think that, um, uh, but also having that obstacle of we have two locations, right. you know, and how do we get, you know, it's, I, I always say like, once people come in our church, you mm-hmm. know, that I, that I pastor at, it's like, yeah. if they see what's inside, it's an um, unbelievable experience for them. Mm-hmm. But like uh, the outside of our building, yeah. we, we kind of inherited right. this old building. Like yeah. we got to figure that out. Yeah. And I think, you know, for you guys, obviously the challenge is, is 
people showing up. But mm-hmm. you know, you have two fabulous cities here that you're in right. that have uh, you know, they're 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 major vacation mm-hmm. spots. They're on the way to a lot of places. If you're doing the road trip out west, right. you probably pass through Branson. Yeah. If you're going, you know, to the east coast, you're passing through or stopping in Lancaster. And so, you know, I think those are very strategic locations mm-hmm. for family vacations and everything right. else, you know, for people to go out there. And I would say even if you're not going on a family vacation, it's still worth the trip right. because sight and sound is there. So Yeah, well thank um, you. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say a big piece for us and I'll like speaking to your audience and those that are trying to find themselves like last night at dinner our team had a conversation to say you know the thing that we need to make sure that we continue to be solid in is knowing who we are in the space because if you're not careful you'll very quickly chase after everything and not do anything really great because right. there's stuff I mean it's like do we want to do a Netflix miniseries do we want to do a broadcast live on a right. network somewhere do we want to just continue to do fathom events do you want to do an online se- like it in our digital space it just never ends there's something new all the time and the distribution options are only growing like Mm -hmm. and you know i mean you know this more than anybody it's just i don't know about more than anybody but (laughs) as much as i'd like to think i know something you know (laughs) yeah i'm gonna regret saying that you're gonna find (laughs) me that i I know more than i would probably take offense to that so (laughs) all right sorry devon (laughs) nothing personal (laughs) he Um, was just on yesterday (laughs) yeah no but truly like know who you are in the space like we know who we are in the live theater space we know that it's not a question anymore we know we do live biblical epic uh productions on stage in an immersive way where spectacle meets story that's who we are that's our identity so now the conversation really is looking at all of the opportunities that are in front of us and saying okay who are we in the space how do we maintain the core identity of sight and sound and continue to grow but not lose who we really truly are. And that's the question that we have yet to answer that we, we haven't like, that's the part that we're exploring. All right. One final question for you. Katie. Yeah. Have you ever performed yourself in a sight and sound production? <laughs> I have, I knew it, <laughs> but only as a child. Okay. When I was, tw- I was on stage. My, f- I was officially on the payroll as a paid actor at four years old. <laughs> Do you have an IMDb? I, I do not. <laughs> and thankfully, <laughs> all of our footage from my childhood is locked away in a very... In Middle <laughs> Earth with the elves. They're the keeping elves. it safe. They're keeping it very safe. <laughs> I was on stage until I was about 12. And then honestly kind of had this moment of being like, I don't think I enjoy this as much as everybody else. <laughs> and I haven't looked back. I love what I get to do now. And love it's it. so fun. Well, no, I think you're very good at it. And it's always a pleasure to connect. So Katie Likewise. Miller, thank you for being here. Sight and Sound, check it out. Maybe a Fathom event coming near you. Uh, also streaming platform. Forums, Amazon, iTunes, everywhere stuff is, go find them, Sight and Sound Theater. And go out to Lancaster, go out to Branson. It's worth the trip. Lucas Miles Show, Katie Miller, thanks for being here today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Lucas.